listen, I'm Santa, and this is what I'm going to give you. You're listening to Relationship Renegade, the show that brings hard truths and realities about relationships. Pod Squad, I'm your host, Jameson Mercier, <laughs> licensed clinical social worker and doctor of marriage and family therapy. And as always, for our weekend edition, my homegirl Mia Terrazis is here with us. What up, fam? How are you doing, Mia? I'm good. I've got great energy this morning. I'm excited to talk about what we're going to talk about today. So, well, yeah. hey, and the great energy we've already verified is not the coffee talking, guys. So. <laughs> it's not my five shots of espresso. It is just natural. <laughs> it's genuine energy. Good. So let's just jump into it then. Okay. All right. We're talking about traditions today, uh, specifically holiday traditions. Mm-hmm. It is the holiday season. It is a time of uh, gathering, merrymaking, and memory making. Mm-hmm. Um, interestingly enough, things may may be a little different uh, right. for most people. However, we're 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 hopeful in the holiday spirit that uh, some of these traditions. Um, will continue, even if they do look slightly different. Mm-hmm. You know? Definitely. Yeah, Mia was telling me she and her family have a bunch. <laughs> yeah, we do have a bunch. And um, <clears throat> how beautiful is it to have traditions, right? It, it's even in, in a time like this <clears throat> where we may not, it might look a little bit different or we might not be able to... Um, see as much family as we're used to seeing or gather as, uh, you know, with as many people, but we can kind of hold on to these traditions. And even in a a smaller space or with less people, we can still do them even social distance or whatever Mm -hmm. um, together. Mm -hmm. You know, I was listening to uh, a report um, on, on NPR maybe a week or two ago. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about how, you know, a lot of people are trying to figure out how they're going to get together, if they're going to get together, because they Mm -hmm. have all these traditions. Right. But what this individual pointed out was it isn't so much what we're doing. Mm -hmm. It's really about that sense of togetherness. Yeah. And when she said that, I said, "Huh." huh, I guess I wonder if, if, the idea then is finding ways to replicate that togetherness versus finding ways to, you know, kind of be together safe, you know? Yeah, I think that's, I, yeah, exactly. That's exactly the sentiment I was going for. Um, but in terms of like traditions, like it, it makes me laugh and, and brings a smile to my face, just thinking about some of the things that my family and I do. Mm. Um because it's been a long-standing kind of joke, if I if if I may say, when people find out about it, um, some of the traditions that we have. My family, my my mom, my dad, my sister, and I are all very very close. Um, so, you know, we have Christmas in particular is is the holiday that's like probably the most tradition filled for us. Okay. Um, so, you know, my mom, she's still, you know, I'm usually the one that wakes everybody up, everybody up because Santa came Santa, AKA my parents, I'm 32. (laughs) Okay. Like it's like, you know, when you have traditions in some sense, it really preserves your childhood. Mia, I listen, every time we, like we talk, I see you're like you grow younger and younger you don't grow older <laughs> yeah you're like a big like a big baby I'm like a big kid you know um and it's it's true it's like I never grew up except I have a job and a bank account now and bills yeah, but other exactly. than that like forget that stuff yeah no um yeah I really do like it's so exciting to me to like be with my my family and you know, I'm usually the first one that wakes up and then I go check my presents under the tree, 
shake them a little bit. I don't know why this is, I'm 30 something. And I still really, I really have the magic of Christmas, you know? Wow. Um, but we have our traditions and things the night before we, we get pajamas every year. They match. Um, so we've been so doing do, that you, forever. You, you, oh boy. And so it's, the joke is, is that when I have told my friends this before, <laughs> they're like, I don't know if anyone has seen Step Brothers, the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, or Will Ferrell. Yes, with Will Ferrell. And I forget the other guy's name, but they're like adult children, essentially, in bunk beds and like, you know, like 12 year olds. So mm-hmm. they laugh and they're like, oh, that's what you guys are like. You're like Step Brothers because it's like you know, we, we're just so silly. We're so, we feel like we're kids again. And my mom comes out and she takes our picture, which we think is really annoying. Um, but yeah, it's something that I'll probably do with my children (laughs) because we do it. So my mom, you know, she puts from Santa. Okay. Um, still we each have our side of the Christmas tree that we sit at since we were little. So you, you know what's funny? So one, I mean, listen, hold on to your traditions. Yeah. Uh two, so growing up, and now again, this is this is just one of the many ways in which we're different. Mm-hmm. We didn't have very many like holiday traditions. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh traditional holo- holiday traditions, I guess you can say. Okay. You know? Um, because my family, we were very different. I, you know, everybody knows. Um, so my dad died when I was nine. And so then it was my mom and the three of us. Mm -hmm. And so very, and again, I came from Haiti when I was seven. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea of Santa Claus, Mm -hmm. like who the, who the fuck is that? Oh my gosh, right. right? So right. so I was just like, what a minute, what hold on. And it's <laughs> when you see you see you see comedy sketches about, you know, <laughs> fat white man breaking into your house to give you gifts. Uh-huh. And I say to myself, wait a minute, there's no way that that's happening. Mm-hmm. And so for me, <laughs> for me, that just was never a thing. And then my mom, who also born and raised in Haiti, when around holidays, it's like Listen, I'm Santa, and this is what I'm going to give you. <laughs> just is, no magical curtain. Just this is it. This is it. This, <laughs> this is, is it. it. <laughs> now, strangely enough, my dad, and this is something I picked up from my mom and um, my other siblings, mm-hmm. when he was around, he really loved Christmas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so he would do trees and lights and tinsels, and he would go all out. Mm-hmm. Um, but we had so we had very limited of that experience. Um, so fast forward now, as my as a dad with kids who grow up American, mm-hmm. they buy into this whole Santa thing, right? Mm-hmm. Which is reinforced by my wife, <laughs> despite being Haitian, was born and raised in America. Mm-hmm. So when I start saying, "Wait a minute! Wait a minute!" not going to lie to my kids about Santa. She's like, hey, you stop being Haitian, is what she says. <laughs> oh, gosh. She goes, you stop it. <laughs> Tighten up. <laughs> Tighten up, right. They, they, they need Santa. Why? Because her parents had that Christmas Santa magic fairy dust that they sprinkled everywhere. <laughs> and so, you know, it's interesting how, you know, those traditions, they t- kind of get passed or carried and who carries them and why. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, some of it does, you know, and keeping traditions alive, you know, you hear um, mm-hmm. when other families are introduced and people get married or, you know, whatever, not necessarily get married, but, you know, partner off and then they have their own traditions. And so there's some traditions that kind of fall to the wayside. And which ones do you value? Which ones do you keep? Totally. Totally. I've, I've had years where I've been like, uh, yeah, we don't need to do all of this. And then the kids come around the corner. So daddy, right. So the tree, we're going to do this for them. It's just like automatic. Yeah. And I say, 
huh, so this is why we do it. Right. Or, you know, your kids grow up to be 32 and still ask for the tree. And they, they do. <laughs> they ask for the tree. They're already asking, when are we going to do it? And I'm like, yeah. slow down. <laughs> because first is Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. This year, it seems like uh, America is just kind of bypassing Thanksgiving almost. You know, literally, I think Thanksgiving has been the, you know, just the step kid or something, because it always seems to be glazed over a lot Mm -hmm. from Halloween. Halloween kind of bleeds into November, I feel like, and then it's in it, it, that's in recent years for me, especially this year. I, I mm-hmm. seem to, I think I was seeing holiday uh, decorations and stuff before mm-hmm. Halloween. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel, I used to work in retail and we, we used to wait, like there used to be like a respect for it and like that nobody really wanted the rush into the next season so Mm -hmm. kind of like honoring that time in some weird way probably they weren't thinking about it that way but then Christmas got bigger and I feel like more opportunities to buy things and so um people were setting up Christmas things and it takes a lot in retail to set up Christmas stuff um earlier and I was like, whoa, okay, we're, we're listening to Christmas music and it's November 1st. Cool. Right, um, right, right. But yeah, yeah, you're right. It, I feel like it has been in the last few years, at least, that we've kind of glazed over Thanksgiving and jumped into like Christmas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so let me ask you this, though. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Now, um, we so there's the Christmas traditions as far as Thanksgiving specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe not traditions, or are there any memories that you hold on to in particular? Um, the idea of Thanksgiving has always been one of my favorite things about it just th- being thankful and um, being thoughtful, being kind. Um, giving. I hosted a Friendsgiving, which is also a newer concept, Mm -hmm. Friendsgiving. Mm -hmm. Um, Because you know what I noticed too is people, um, especially for for my family as well, like my family, um, my parents live in Texas, my sister lives in New York City, I'm in Florida. And so for the limited amount of time that we all have with for Thanksgiving break, Usually it's not a full week. It's usually a couple days. Um, for the cost of flying and the shorter amount of time, <clears throat> and then to go right into Christmas, which Christmas um, holiday travel and things like that was is really expensive as well. Um, we just kind of cut the, the Thanksgiving family Miss, I guess like we were just kind of like we're gonna skip this and we're gonna spend more time together and during Christmas time okay so friends the concept of Friendsgiving um is what I've kind of adopted because I can still have those Thanksgiving trimmings and um you know we can cook together and I still have um my that sense of family because it's my friend's you know, it's interesting. I've been fortunate in that for most of my life, the majority of my family, we've all been within like 10 minutes of each other. Mm, that's so nice. The only one who's far is my brother and his wife. Mm-hmm. And now they have a little baby. They're up in Maryland. Mm-hmm. Um, and they've always had to make the trek to come mm-hmm. down because everybody's here. Right. You know, um, and so... I've been fortunate to always have like a Thanksgiving mm-hmm. when things changed though was when, when I got married mm-hmm. and then my sister's wife, she, she's now married. So now we have like four households mm-hmm. and now mm-hmm. you got to figure out what's happening. Hi, we are the Messiah kids. Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss a show 
by clicking subscribe now. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. Now back to the show. Yeah. Now, That's a lot to coordinate. Y- uh-huh. Uh-huh. And so now you figure, where are we going today? Are we going to Tampa? Are we going to Moms? Are they coming here? Oh, gosh. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. No, it's a lot. <laughs> And, and, and some people are better at that. And if I want, if we wanted to, you know, I could coordinate that and put a schedule mm-hmm. out. However, <laughs> we're just like, I think part of me likes that, uh, that chaos almost that comes with it. Mm-hmm. Um, because also in that weekend is my wife's birthday. Oh gosh. Okay. You got like double whammies. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. So. So it's a little crazy. And I, I guess mm-hmm. to, to, to circle back to the whole traditions thing, we it's chaotic for us, but I think let's just all meet somewhere and then figure out what we're doing mm-hmm. it seems to work for us best. Yeah. And, you know, I do want to elaborate slightly more on this idea of Friendsgiving, because have you heard about this? I have heard about Friendsgiving. As a matter of fact, I think I participated in it once Okay. Uh, when I was in college. Okay. And, and I'll say this, and, and then I'll let you continue. Uh-huh. Um, because it was a new concept for me, I actually enjoyed it. Mm, kind of uh-huh. getting a break from like the regular family stuff. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. You know, I hosted one. And, um, it was my first one and I was at my first, my, my new apartment place. And I really wanted to do a Friendsgiving that wasn't the traditional, um, um, like Turkey food and things like that. And let me tell you something, my, one of my favorite holidays is Thanksgiving, just of the essence of it. Um, of course I don't like how it began. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, but what it has at least from what I know has turned to just being thankful and things like that. That's the part I really enjoy. Um, my, actually my sister and I, fun fact, watch Pocahontas every Thanksgiving. We do. We do. Um, yes. We talk about things like that in my family too, because we don't want that to be lost how Thanksgiving came about. Um, It's silly, you know, to watch Pocahontas, but um, for us, it's kind of like our little tribute, I guess. Um, But anyway, so, you know, Friendsgiving was something that when I was in college, that was a, that was something that I heard because some people hadn't don't don't go home for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And then now I feel like with, um, like I said, with, with just the travel time and then how expensive things have been, like Thanksgiving kind of d- does go to the wayside a little bit, but with your friends and stuff, they, I've done these get togethers where that then becomes the tradition. So making a holiday for my friends is really fun. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And it's usually, a, you know, maybe the week before the actual Thanksgiving day. Um, but it's been really fun to do that and play games and pr- bring um, friends together and, and tell them I wrote all of my friends why I'm thankful that they're in my life. And, mm. um, you know, food, of course, uh, is a huge thing in any holiday time, um, which that's how some people nurture. <laughs> so it's true. We all brought kind of a dish that was significant to us, or maybe for some easy to make, like myself, Mm -hmm. and brought it all together. And it was a beautiful thing. So Friendsgiving has become one of my favorite things during the the Thanksgiving holiday, for sure. No, that's awesome. I think um, as you so as you were talking, I was thinking that, you know, the traditions that we grow up with, some we keep and others evolve and change and then we create new ones, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, even like for us, for example, as you have children or your families grow or even you move away, um, you start new traditions. Mm-hmm. Um, like for the kids, there are certain, you, I guess you, you begin to realize, at least we have, 
there are certain things that we want to hold on to and pass on and others mm-hmm. we don't. Yeah. You know, as far as the whole holidays piece and the gift giving piece, um, we're at least, you know, we really try, I know I do, to not get caught up in the materialism of the holidays. Mm-hmm. You know, has that been something that you've noticed um, as far as some in some of your traditions or conversations with friends or family? The gift giving part or not doing the gift giving? Well, I mean... Gen- broadly speaking, right? Um, mm-hmm. How is that addressed, if at all, in the holiday season as far as in your traditions? Um, you know, when we were younger, of course, it was like we loved getting a ton of gifts. <laughs> that kid doesn't. Mm-hmm. But I think um, since we've gotten older, um, what we have been doing is really focusing on is there something that is like um, more practical that we could get each other. You know, for instance, my parents moved into a a new house and they're, they're renovating it. So my sister and I for, for Christmas are either going to get them something related to their house to kind of cut some of the expense a little bit um, or, you know, something related to that. Now, if that's not usually the case, then what I have found the gift giving looks like is, um, donating to causes that are unique to our, our personality, our character, mm. um, that has become in the last couple years, something that one, we enjoy doing. So we'll donate on behalf of that person's name. Um, and we always adopt like a kid or a family, um, that, you know, all of the family members will purchase something for that family in need. So our gift giving to each other um, since we've gotten older has been giving to others um, versus each other. Um, So we we enjoy doing that. Okay. Yeah, I like that. We've started and tried some years more successfully than others. Mm -hmm. That whole uh, back to the whole gratitude and thankfulness of the season in general, mm-hmm. you know, not that you can't, you know, receive, but just being mindful of just how fortunate mm-hmm. uh, we are, you know, and, and giving back, whether it's volunteering. Right. Um, well, real quick tip, anybody who's looking to volunteer at like mm-hmm. a food bank or a shelter or anything. Mm-hmm you really need to coordinate that like months in advance. Mm-hmm. I did not know that one year we tried to just kind of show up and help and they were like, yeah, we're good. Yeah. They get a lot of volunteers. Uh, a lot of volunteers. I yeah. tried to do that too. I was like, let's go, let's go volunteer. And um, yeah, you, you, you just can't. <laughs> you can't do it like that, you know? And yeah. so, you know, we've had to find other ways and, and whether it's other families Mm -hmm. um and which by the way this year there are many uh Mm -hmm. people and families uh in informal situations Mm -hmm. simply due to covid right you know so there's lots of opportunities to give outside of your traditional uh, organizations Mm -hmm. um you know as far as uh, to continue with kids and the whole gift giving um, as my kids have gotten older, they've wanted more and more, of course. <laughs> and, and what we've done, um, we say, hey, give me a list of um, five things. Mm. Mm-hmm. Just give me a list of five things that you really want. And, and I used to say to them, hey, it has to be like stuff and experiences, but they didn't quite grasp that. Mm-hmm. I said, just five things. And I said, and between my wife and I, we might give them like two or three of, the, of those things. Mm-hmm. And then anything else they get is about experiences. So we just kind of make that automatic, mm-hmm. whether that's going somewhere, whether it's a show, um, you know, just outdoors, camping, whatever the case is. I love that. And, and um, you know, I have my little nephew, at least I call him that. And, um, his birthday is on the third. And then of course there's Christmas. And so um, I, I was thinking the same thing, like what the heck do I get this kid who literally has 
all he could ever need. Mm -hmm. And um, my thoughts went to experiences. Mm -hmm. Um, What a great idea, you know, to, to have an opportunity to create a really cool memory or, and, or a learning experience for them. Oh yeah. It's gotten to the point now where the kids will say, you know what I want for my birthday or for Christmas? And then at first I used to go, oh, Jesus, what is it now? <laughs> now I'm hearing things like um, a weekend at like a hotel or something. Oh. A weekend in, you know, Chicago. And I say to myself, okay, I'm proud that it's about yeah. going somewhere <laughs> and seeing the city. But Chicago, I don't know if I want to take you to Chicago. <laughs> okay. But they get the idea. You know, you got to love kids too that are just like, why can't this happen? Like there's no expense that's paid. You know, it's just like, yeah, I, for a weekend, I'd like to stay at, you know, this mm. this cool hotel. Well, listen, I've <laughs> literally been told, daddy, daddy, listen, can we go to, let's go to, uh, let's go to Paris. And I said, <laughs> I said, Paris. Okay. Nice. Again, I'm glad that you're aware yeah france and europe and (laughs) you're a little cultured for your nine-year-old mind um yeah but i ain't going to paris you're not going i'm not taking you today or next week it don't work like that (laughs) but i'd rather hear that than "Ooh, daddy can i have this toy yeah yeah you know while you're stepping over a mountain of toys (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know that's so true so, so, so we try to instill some of those in the kids um, just just because, you know, not all kids, but the kids mm-hmm. who are like spoiled like that, mm-hmm. uh, they don't mm-hmm. always end up the kind of adults that you want to be friends with. Mm, true. Preach. <laughs> so That's very true. Yeah, we don't want <clears throat> them to be those kinds of kids or adults. Um. So now with this year, Mm -hmm. you know, we've been talking about traditions and past traditions. Um, We do recognize it will be different for a lot of people. Um, We said that at the beginning. um, One, I mean, I I don't want us to end this show without addressing just the people who will be alone. Yeah. uh, For the holiday season. um, For a number of reasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, before that was COVID, you know, there were, it was because of college, kids who are away for school. Right. Um, there were uh, military families and veterans who were separated from their families um, because they were deployed overseas or whatever the case. Mm-hmm. And so I just want to encourage you guys who are listening um, to check in on those people. Yeah. You know, more more now than ever before. Um, that's a tradition I think we all can start. Just, you know, checking in on those who just have nobody. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a great tip. Yeah. <clears throat> so if you have new traditions, if you have old traditions, um, if you have some stuff that your parents did that you're like, we are not doing that, <laughs> um, let us know. Let us know. We want to know about it. Um, I hope, we hope that your Thanksgiving was, is a uh, uh, a good Thanksgiving. I say good. Um, despite what's happening now, there still remains a lot to be thankful for yeah um i know sometimes it's hard to see that it's hard to recognize that um but even in the small things even in the most minuscule you know there are things to be thankful for and so we're thankful for having you guys with us we're thankful for the support that we've received and uh we hope the holiday season in general is a blessed and great holiday for you yes thank you for joining us for this episode as always we will look forward to having you back next time for another episode of relationship renegade bye now